Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 20 of Creating a Space Shooter with Godot. Now we're going to have multiple enemies in our game, and that means it'll be a good idea to maybe get like a base class or a base enemy scene that has everything that's in common to all the enemies, and then we'll make separate scenes kind of branching off of that to make different varieties of enemy types. Now we are actually going to base our enemies off of our player scene a little bit, so we'll be kind of referencing the scene as we create our very first enemy. So first we'll go up to the scene and we'll create a new scene. It's going to be a 2D scene and an enemy is going to be an area 2D. So I will add an area 2D node, right click it and I'll make it the scene root, delete the old node 2D and I'll give this a name of enemy. This is going to be our base enemy. Of course and every enemy is going to have a sprite. So I'll have a sprite and every enemy is also going to need a collision shape 2D. Now again, this enemy is going to represent everything in common to every enemy in our game. Now of course the sprite of an enemy is going to change, but just so we have something to see in the editor, we can just drag in a placeholder image so we can at least see something here. So I'm going to go to my textures folder and I'm going to use my enemy UFO just as a placeholder texture right here. So it can pretty much be any image you want. Next we'll grab our collision shape and we'll just give it a kind of a default collision shape for everything they have. Again, enemies can change this based on how they look and everything. So for now I'll just add a circle and I'll make it the proper size of my ship. And I'll go ahead and save this scene. I'm going to create a new folder for enemies called enemy and I'll save it as enemy.tscene. So all we have here is an area 2D and a sprite. So let's take a look at our player. Well, now what can a player do that our enemies should also be able to do? Well, the first thing is move, of course. Every, every enemy is going to be moving down the screen at some rate. So I'm going to click on my enemy node, and I'll add a new script called enemy.gd, like so. So we're going to want a variable for how fast the enemy should be moving down screen per second. So I'll have an export variable, that way we can change it in the editor. We'll call it vertical speed, and we'll set this equal to like 10 for now. Every enemy can change that to whatever they need. And now it's the job of this base enemy class to actually move the enemy downward. So inside of its physics process method, we're going to go ahead and we'll simply take the position of our enemy, the Y position, and we'll increase it by the vertical speed times delta. So in this case, 10 pixels per second or 10 units per second. So let's just see if that works. We'll go to our gameplay node here and I'll drag in an instance of my enemy. And I'll just move that around kind of like the meteor. And I will make my enemy move, I don't know, at 100 units per second vertical speed. So if we run the game, we can see, yep, our ship is moving down appropriately. Now remember, we can't forget this. When the enemy leaves the screen, if the player doesn't kill it, if we click our remote uh, tab in the scene tree, and we go to gameplay, we see that the enemy still exists, even though it's completely off of the game screen. So we can't forget in the enemy here, to add a visibility notifier and remove the entity whenever it leaves the screen. So I'll add a visibility notifier 2D node. Again, every individual entity, enemy rather, can expand this to be whatever size they need, but for now I'll just make it cover our little spaceship image placeholder that we have here, like so. And we'll go to the node for the visibility notifier and we'll connect the screen exited signal to our enemy script just like we did with the bullets and everything. And whenever the enemy leaves the screen, we have to queue free to remove this enemy from the game. Okay, what else does an enemy have? Well, of course it has some life. So we'll have an export variable called health, and that's going to be an integer, and we'll set that equal to, I don't know, five health to start. And again, every enemy can change that. And just like our meteor, if we go into our meteor script here, we see that our meteor has some life, in this case we called it life, and it has a damage function. Now we also need our enemies to have a damage function so that you know a bullet can damage the enemy. So it's going to be very similar to this damage function right here. So we'll go to the enemy and we'll create a function called damage with some amount, which is going to be an integer, and we'll say health minus equals amount, and then of course if health is less than or equal to zero, then we die. So for now we'll just queue free. Eventually we'll have to make some cool particle effect or something, but for now that will make the enemy disappear if it dies. So if we run the game we would expect our enemy 
or our player to be able to shoot the enemy, but of course that's not working, but we can still shoot the meteor. So what's happening here? Well, remember how the bullets work. If we go into the bullet script, bullet.gd, the bullet is only going to damage something if it's in the damageable group. So we have to add every enemy to the damageable group. That way a bullet can actually damage it. So I'll click my enemy here. I'll go to the node tab, groups, and I'll add this to the damageable group. Make sure you spell it the same or it's not going to work. And now if we save and run, we should be able to have our bullets Yep, hit the enemy, and once our enemy gets health of zero or less, it dies. I'm going to go to my gameplay scene here, and I'm going to delete this enemy that I dragged into my scene because this enemy is really just our base enemy. It's what every other enemy in our game is going to kind of extend. You'll see that in the next episode. So we don't actually want to put an instance of our enemy in our scene. So I'm going to delete that from my gameplay scene. And in the next episode, we'll go ahead and create our first real enemy. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.